So in today's video, we're gonna look at how to vibe code a registration form using Google Sheets and Google Apps Script to create a custom HTML registration. So here is our prompt for ChatGPT, and I'll include this in the description below. And so basically we go through and explain what we're doing, some basic project details, and then I have some different things here. Like I explained, drop down options will be coming down from this drop downs tab. And so you can have more than one drop down, and then you would just adjust this and tell it where those drop downs are coming from and where they need to be. And then the registration tab, we have these fields here. And so you can obviously adjust this as well. And then I basically explain what each one is. And then finally, I have some more details on how I want to display. So name, phone, and email on one row, address fields on a new row. You can leave this blank if you want to auto do it and you could adjust it later. And then in this case, I want to be able to add more than one re registration at a time. And so we'll do that there. And then finally, what do we do when they submit it? So we'll save new entries as new rows in this tab. I need to update this here, registration tab. Disable and gray out the submit button after it's pressed, add a spinner icon. This is just a UI thing here. Once it's finished processing, hide the form and display a success message. Let the user know it's safe to close the window. So that should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get that working. And while that's happening, we're going to go ahead and create our app script here. And then once our project is created, we can go ahead and name this. We'll just call this registration form and then we can delete this existing one here and then we will need a new file so we have a code.js and that will be the back end stuff that's going to interact with the google sheet and then we need our front end or our html and so i'm going to call this index we'll see if that's what it ends up being and then i'm going to clear this out as well and so these will be the two files that we will use when it generates that code and then once this is generating, we'll paste that in. And then the one thing we'll have to do is actually deploy it. That's just the term for basically making it live. And so we'll start with a new deployment and that'll give us a URL that we can share. And then from then on out, if we make any changes, we'll just do manage deployment and we'll update it so we can keep using it and push those changes to the live version. So it's coming up with the code now. So here is that code.js file. And so again, that's the server side or the back end. And so it looks like that one's done. So let's go ahead and copy that. Go to our code GS and we'll paste that in there and hit save. And then we'll go to our index file and we'll see, looks like it's still working on this one. So we'll just kind of scroll down, see what's happening here. So while this is happening, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this for the first time. Now we'll have to update it again immediately because this index file is blank. But let's go ahead and walk through what this process looks like. So to start with, you'll have to do a new deployment. And this only needs to happen once. And then after that, we'll do manage and update. So then what we're going to do is this gear icon and web app. And then optionally, you can put a description. So you can put in first deployment. And then here, the options we're going to want to use in most cases is going to be execute as me. And then for access, the options you probably want is either anyone or if you have workspace, you could potentially have just your workspace. So that way you restrict access if it's an internal company thing. But if this is something you want anyone to have access to the form, then we just want to make sure we click anyone and click deploy. Now we need to authorize access. So we'll do that here. Click our email, and this is just Google's legal disclaimer. So we'll go to advanced, go to registration form, and then finally it tells us what it needs access to, which is essentially just this Google Sheet, so it can add those registrations there. So we'll click continue, and there we go. So this is that link that you can share and put wherever you need to, so that way people can register using your form. Now it's not going to show anything right now because our index is blank. So if we go over here and check, looks like that is finished generating. So let's go ahead and copy that code, go to our index HTML file, we'll paste that in and hit save. And at this point, we can update our deployment. And so we need to do this anytime you make a change, 
when you want to make that live at that link. So we'll click this edit button right here and then new version and we can optionally add a description. So we can just say something like added HTML and just lets us know what we did with that version. And then there's that same URL. And when we hit deploy here again, it's not gonna update that link so you can keep reusing the same link. But if you went back and did new deployment, it's gonna create a new link. So just keep that in mind. Typically you only do new deployment once and then from then on out, you just manage an update. Now what we're gonna do here, because we're, we might go back and forth a little bit, we can also use test deployment. So what test deployment is, the difference is this link here that we click on it, it will update every time we save the code. So normally with this live link, which is right here, it only updates when we come back here and edit and do a new version. And so if I made some changes here to the code, change the title, whatever like that, it's only gonna show up after I update deployment. Now this test deployment will show up immediately as soon as I hit save and then just refresh. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what we have going on here. So we have some extra things going on here. I don't know why there's dark mode buttons here. I think that's just showing number one attendee. Looks like we can add a new attendee registration there, just like that, so that looks great. So let's just see what happens if we put a sample in here. And so let's see what happens when we click submit. So something goofy is happening here. So let's go ahead and do our first change here. So one, let's remove, I think this is maybe it doesn't do anything. The dark mode button on top right. Two. I'm going to copy this text. This button needs to be white and we can determine maybe we want just to remove that. Remove the text. And then three. I entered a five digit zip and it wouldn't let me submit. Let's see what the error message was. Please match. Actually, let's make this number four. I'm gonna add one more here, three. Can we make the phone number appear in the phone formatting while we're typing? So let's see what happens when we request these changes. But overall, it hasn't submitted yet, so we can't see it there yet. All right, so it's updating the HTML now. And the one thing that you want to make sure is sometimes what it'll do is it'll give you just part of the file. And so here's an updated index HTML file. So you just wanna make sure that actually includes the whole thing. So like HTML, it's gonna have these at the top and then the closing ones at the bottom. And so if we look at this, we can see those opening ones here at the top. And if we go in our original one, you can come down and see it ends with HTML. And so it will have the same thing here once this is done. And so there it is. So one of the things that may happen is it may give you things like, oh, you only need to update this function. It might just give you this piece. And so then you'd have to go and scroll and find it, which usually with a function, because it says function here, that's how you can tell is you basically grab that function name and you can come over here and find and then you just have to find where it actually is so this is just calling that function so it's basically running it but you have to figure out where it is actually living which is going to be function and then that name so this is the actual function and these are just running it so this would then be what you'd update all right so we'll call that good for now um, the same thing can happen if the code gs Again, there's these functions here, so it might just update part of that. If it gets confusing, just ask it to give you the whole file, and that just makes the whole thing simpler. So go ahead and replace our HTML. And so again, if we were using our live file, we need to manage an update deployment, but because you're using our test one, we can now come over here and refresh once we click save over here. 
So here it is, got rid of that button. Um, let's see what happens now. And let's see if that zip works correctly now. So we'll ignore that. So there's that submitting button. Registration submitted. And there it is. All right, so let's go ahead and recheck this real quick. I want to see if it works with more than one, but we're ready on our way. So let's do this again real quick. All right, so now we have two registrations. Let's click submit and see what happens here. So it's submitting, registrations have submitted. And there you go. We can see we have both names coming through now. So this is the basics of how you can do a form where you can accept those registrations. So we can do any more that we want to here with updating. You can go back and forth with chat or whatever you're using. If you want to update the look, you could add an image, stuff like that, whatever else you want to edit on this. And then when you're done, you'll just want to make sure you go back to manage deployment, hit this edit icon, and then we can do this. And then we could do working version. We could even add a version number if we want. Hit deploy. And then this link that you can share is now going to be live with those latest updates. And then you could share this with whoever you need to and they can use it. You can even embed this link in a Google site or in your own site. All right, so that's it for today's video on vibe coding a registration form using Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and Apps Script. And as always, have a great day.